Your Excellency, thank you very much for your time. Welcome to Roadmap 2019. Mm, my pleasure. It's been a very busy couple of weeks, so maybe I should start from your transition from being a state governor to national chairman of the ruling party. How has it been so far for you? Well, thank you very much. I think it's been quite exciting. Um, in fact, I've seen it all. I, I should know. Basically, I, I know what the vision was. And I know what our mission was in forming the APC. Um, and I know the basic uh, ideology of the party, you know, that we want to be, is founded on the principles of progressive politics. In other words, we are, we, we, we are proud to be different from the conservative uh, forces. And um, we were also clear that to be different means we have to be membership driven, membership based, people oriented, and uh, we will work to, in a way that put the Nigeria people first as a party if we win. And you go through our manifesto, you will find that, uh, broadly speaking, is the party is a left wing party, broad left, broad left. That is not to say we were not conscious of the fact that there were some some conservative elements who were also members uh, who also joined, you know, uh, at various levels. So uh, since becoming the chairman, I didn't need one to sit me down to brief educate you, educate me about you know what this party is about, and you become chairman. This are they do, this are they don't. So. I was at home with the issues, and um, like many other party leaders, I was troubled that after the initial um, cohesion and effectiveness of the party, you know, beginning with the pioneering effort of um, our first interim chairman, uh, Chief B.C. Akande, former governor of uh, Ocean State, Ocean State uh, who laid what obviously is an enviable, solid foundation um, I was clear about what the challenges were, where I think we had gotten it wrong and what we needed to do differently, to not to reinvent, just to remind us of the basic agenda, uh, to provide leadership for the party in a way that will give everyone a sense of belonging and uh, give the party members a sense of ownership and a sense of participation. Do you think this is healthy? For the country, because when people talk about other democracies, advanced or matured democracies, they say that you know people are identified more or less with a particular tendency, and they stick with that tendency yeah, all their lives. Yeah. Uh, they can fight within the tendency, but they don't leave it. So, so coming from that background, is it good for us to have this maybe once in a, in four years regular migration to and fro mm -hmm. between the major parties? I think for now, that is to be expected because I was just reflecting recently and I realized that for any Nigerian who is under 40 or under 36, 38, by 1999 when, uh, APC, when we returned to this present uh, democracy, most of those people were under 20. Yes. So they were not quite politically informed. And so the only form of democracy they have known was what I would call the PDP variant, other president, Olusegun Obasanjo. That is the only border they saw. And of course, the PDP, other president, Obasanjo did everything to neutralize the opposition, co-opted the leadership of opposition, give them a special advisor positions, and a few other to keep patronage. And they were all ready to move so Nigeria effectively became a war party state, and the president appoint chairman and dispose of chairman. Uh, You're talking of party yeah, chairman. A, a national party, party chairman. chairman yeah, yes. And of course, some other levels. So that is what people had been known to. And of course, uh, after 1999, perhaps that was the best election that was conducted uh, for as long, you know, that was done by the military, who we can say substantially did it quite resort to the use of uh, toggery and criminal manipulation of the electoral process. And so once from 2003, it became obvious to Nigeria. Remember when the then president said the elections were do or die for him, and PDP then decreed that they were going to run the country for 60 years. Uh, election after election, by the manner in which elections were managed, 
if you looked at Professor Iwu's uh, record in terms of election management, uh, Nigerians became most political activists came to the conclusion that if you want to be politically relevant, the way to go is to move it to uh, PDP. So regardless of your orientation, if you wanted to be politically involved and active, and you wanted to seek election, uh, regardless of your individual views and conviction, the only business in town was to join PDP. So year after year, PDP succeeded in turning Nigeria almost to a one-party state. Now, if you review the electronic and the print media at that time, the NSC Nigeria Labour Congress is in Italy under my leadership, was seen as the unofficial opposition. We became the only credible voice that could question PDP-led federal government decision on a variety of issues. And the other opposition, you know, the best they could do was to form what they now become a CMPP, a coalition yeah, of... Nigerian uh, political parties. Yeah, because now why do you want to form coalition when you are all in business because you, you have different set of ideas? You form coalition, not to form government, coalition of opposition. It tells you the extent to which opposition became so weak that that was the only way they could, they could be heard. So what then happened, uh, what that means is that whether you were from the far right or the far left or even a communist, or a fascist, and you want to be, you want to seek election, you join the ruling party. That was the only business. I think, in all modesty, I like to be able to say that. I'm, I'm able to say that um, it is so that this background went to Edo State. And if you look at my campaign, I, I launched the attack against Godfatherism. And to explain what you appear to be wondering about, um, the movement. At yes. the eve of every election, uh, Chief Obafemi Awolowo, who many describe as the best president Nigeria never had, in some of his very, very notable uh, seminar work and uh, published works, had said, and I've tried to quote him, that for the progressives to take over power, they will need the support of some conservative elements. When the progressive has succeeded with the collaboration of conservative element to seize power, and they try to govern within the, you know, based on the principles of progressiveness, the conservatives will not be able to cope and they will walk away on their own. Then the progressives will become stronger and walk for the good of the country. When you look at what has happened recently, that's exactly what happened. All the conservative elements, and you can actually trace the background of some of them. Some were born with silver spoon, as they say. They've never known hardship. They've never, you can't say that they can explain their relative position in the system by reference to what they had accomplished on account of hard work, not based on dignity of labor. Somehow, by accident of birth, they were rich. A couple of them like that. So you can't say, when you look at this background of some of them, that they were the ability to qualify them to be conservatives. But they have lent a happy hand to form uh, the APC and to wrest power for the conservative. And once you were in power, and the federal government has chosen to be faithful, other President Buhari, to the principles of progressive politics, which necessarily mean re-emphasizing the right of the ordinary Nigerian to try to formulate, formulate public policies that are people-oriented, people-focused. The conservatives have to move away, and they moved. And as you can see, after they left, I believe APC is even stronger. More progressive elements are coming in, and the best example is the one we went to uh, discuss with yesterday, uh, former Governor Shekarao, a classroom teacher was a classroom teacher before he became the governor of Kano State. And that tells you it wasn't about money, it wasn't about connection, it was just about what the ordinary man in Kano saw as very ordinary one of them. You know, so I think over time, when our elections are more democratic, you eliminate rigging, the vote increasingly begin to count, and the electoral process is less expensive and uh, much more importantly, is free of manipulation of election result. 
people will join party on the basis of conviction, not on the basis of fear. Now what has happened before now is that people joined on the basis of fear because to do otherwise, if you were not a PDP, you were finished. I think that the current realignment, we get to that level whether you are either to the left or to the right. And like you rightly said, within the right, there will be various shifts of opinion. They will do battle within the right. And within the left, there will be various shifts of opinion. And they will do battle within the left. I can tell you as national chairman that within the APC, you could see right of the left. You could see, see left, left of the left. The left. Yes. And you can see center of the left. But broad left. I mean, when President Muhammad Buhari says, no matter how poor or how uh, our revenue have declined, I want to be able to devote half a trillion naira, 500 billion, to be managed under the social intervention fund, whether it is a conditional uh, grant transfer, transfer and some other social policies, that the poorest among us should, should get 5,000. It tells you a commitment to the poorest of the poor. And, and that is what uh, th those interventionist policies, they do not coincide with the logic of market forces. You know, market forces which the conservative believes in is that if you drop out, it is your fault. And if you succeed, it is your fault. And there is nothing that establishes this more, the Nigeria variant, than other the PDP. You, you had this policy, which I hope APC will work out to get rid of, when they created AMCON. AMCON is the greatest fraud that when the capitalists make profit, they privatize the profits. They share the dividend among themselves. When they make losses, they take taxpayers' money to bail out a private enterprise in complete violation of the logic of market forces. So you could see the Nigerian state, uh, the, the, the governing party of the PDP, you know, unable to accept the full logic of the, of the doctrine of, of, of market forces that they have opted to. And unfortunately, even as CPC, we seem to have retained that policy. But I'm hopeful that going forward, we'll have to subject this to popular debate and remove this uh, aberration.